it's like she's trying to go to hell. I don't know that there are very many women who are trying to be in ministry who are as bad, who are as worse, who are as demonic, who are as diabolical as Juanita Bynum. Juanita Bynum is easily a false prophet, a false teacher. Uh, she is a liar. She is a con artist. I don't know that there are anybody who's worse. And if there are, shame on them, really, and sad for the body because she's duping people. This latest thing that she says, just when you think that she says something that is just as bad as it can get, she will outdo herself, which makes you wonder, is, is this just intentional? Can I reveal the secret? The dragon hates you from Genesis because the dragon, Satan, because he came from God, he prophesied. Now, what she's trying to get at because he came from God is she's trying to say that 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 the, the, the demon, this dragon, the devil is uh, is of the essence of God. I think that's kind of where she's going, but it gets worse. Prophesied to Eve, and he said, "The Lord know when you eat it, you will have a gross mind like God." So the the devil prophesied to Eve and said that, you know, when you eat it, you'll have a gross mind like God. This is what's coming out of her mouth. And the sad part is, look at the room. All of these women who are just eating it up. These might be the least intelligent Christians ever. Now, I'm not saying they're saved. I'm not saying they're not saved. But as we said before, you can be saved and stupid. Tweet that. You can be saved and stupid. But it's just hard to imagine that they're even saved to hear this stuff. And nothing just, no no bells, no lights, no whistles. Nothing goes off inside you when you hear this mess. Nothing is triggered. No warnings go off. To hear those things, there ought to be some sort of disconnect with your ears and your mind and your heart. I get it. Sometimes you're a little bit slow. We've all been there. But once it comes in and you think about it, and you just kind of compare it with scriptures. That is, if you're reading scriptures, something in your mind and something in your heart should cause you to repel that off. You should be repulsed by what you're hearing. But they're not. They're cheering for it. He knows when you, when you, when you eat this. That's why God used the woman to bring the Savior back into the world. Now, he didn't have to, and he's not using any and every woman. He used a particular woman who comes from a particular child, who, by the way, her husband is also from a particular tribe, from the tribe of Judah. And to be clear, uh, he is not of her particular makeup. He's not like her. I'm pretty sure maybe he looked like her. I, I have no idea. But... He's just using her. She was a vessel that was used. Wonderful that she was. Nothing against her. But there's nothing special about women. Because what she's trying to do is say that this applies to all women. Because the woman ate the fruit and it did expand her. So you bigger. Now, again, the woman is Eve. The, the mother um, who birthed the child, Jesus, is Mary. Two different women. But she ate the fruit and her mind expanded and she was, this is bad. Big enough now to carry God. So you big enough now to carry God. No, you're not big enough now to carry God. God carries you. That is, if you place your faith in him, God will deal with you, Miss Bynum, in just a little bit, just shortly. You don't have long to get this right, to get it right, to repent. You don't have long. And selling these people this dream that you can carry God. And I don't know if they're thinking about it. Maybe they're saying, well, that's not what she means because there's always going to be somebody that's going to make an excuse for her. But what she's saying is evil and dangerous. Oh, no, I just said something right. I said you big enough to carry God. You powerful enough to carry the son of the living God. You no, you're not. No, you're not. Now, you can have the spirit of the living God in you. That is, if you place your faith in him, which means you're in him and he's keeping you. But you're giving yourself, you're giving women, you're giving people too much power. You better open your mouth and give God a prayer. I don't know about you, but I'm a woman and I want all of my benefits. 
Let me tell you what you are. Let me just tell you what you are. And those folks that listen, the Bible talks about her, someone like her. The Bible says, I know your deeds and your toil and your perseverance and that you cannot tolerate evil men, but he's got an issue with you. Now he sees that the church has some good qualities. You don't tolerate this, but there's something that you do tolerate. He goes on in Revelation 2 down to verse 22. And he says, uh, let's start in verse 20. He said, but I have this against you that you tolerate the woman Jezebel who calls herself she calls herself a prophetess and she teaches and leads my bond servants astray so that they commit acts of immorality and eat things sacrificed out of that. He's not necessarily speaking literally. Now, he might be literally, but these people are being led astray, led away from God. He says, I gave her time to repent and she does not want to repent of her immorality. Behold, I will throw her on a sick bed or bed of sickness and those who commit adultery with her, meaning going after other gods or doing things contrary to God. Uh, I have also thrown her on a sick bed and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent of her deeds. Cheering for what she's saying is not, not going to get you to have it. Now, she's literally making things up. She goes against what 1 Corinthians 4, 6 says, that we should not extend or exceed what the text states. But in Genesis 3, let's go back to the story. The story says that the, the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field. He says to her, uh, did God say? Well, that should tell you something. Did God say? Did God say anything like what she said? No. Uh, but what does Satan want to do? He wants to say, well, maybe he did because he comes back and says to her, well, what God really said, what he meant was this. And it sounded good to her because he's tapping into something that's in her heart, her desire for something. We'll come to that in just a second. But he says, the serpent said to the woman, you will surely not die. For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, you will your eyes will be open." And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, the be like God part is the part that's appealing to Juanita Bynum. That's the part that's appealing to some of these women. They want to be like God. They want to do this. They want to either bring them, bring God down at their level or go up to God's level. They want to be like him. And so she's saying that God's mind was, uh, what, was the, what was the phrase that she used about God? She said that God uh, had this, this gross mind. So we're saying that God had a gross mind. Where she's getting this from is knowing good and evil. Did God ever experience evil? Did he ever do evil? No, but he knows what it's like. He understands. He's familiar with it. Why? Because he knows Satan. And plus, look at us. And so the point is that you would do these things and you would have a knowledge, obviously, of good, but then obviously a knowledge of evil when you sin and do so intentionally. But she is accrediting God with unrighteousness and saying that he has a gross mind. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food and that it was the light of the eyes and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from it its fruit and ate. Here is a woman who wanted to be like God, who wanted something more. It was in her eyes. It was desirable to her. Well, Juanita Bynum takes it to the next level. Clearly, if there's ever been someone that has spent some time with the serpent, it's this woman. The, the sad part is, the amazing thing is all of these women who are there eating this up, cheering, shouting. What are you shouting for? You're literally shouting for your own demise. Again, I really think, I'm, I have to believe, I have to conclude that she's doing this on purpose and that she's trying her best to outdo herself. And she really does want to go to hell. Mm -hmm.